I know that it's been a while since I have posted some Legends content. A lot of that had to do with the holiday weekend, throwing some things off, but we are getting back on track. We've got a new monthly reward card, so naturally I'm going to play today and I'll be honest, for the entire week, some crab decks, right? This is going to be crab week and we're going to start with Crab Crusader. The version that you see on the screen is what we're going to be rolling with today. Going to jump into two games, win or lose on the ladder and see how it does. Deck code will be in the video description like normal. So early reports from folks that have had a chance to play. I have not. This is me diving in uh, <laughs> right now for the first time this month because again the holiday weekend kind of threw things off. Uh, but early reports from people who have had the chance to play have been that uh, crabs are good and there's a lot of them on the ladder. And I'm not really surprised by that. So I am running what I would call uh, robo crabs because I have a very heavy Dwemer package and pretty much uh, all of the lists that we're going to be playing this week. So uh, we'll give you a little sneak peek, if you will. Today is going to be Crusader, but for the rest of the week, we're going to have uh, Spellsword, Mage, and Monk crab decks as well. Of course, I'm on your side. And that's obviously painful. I'll whip them into shape. So it looks like we're going to be up against Aggro Assassin, which means I think that we cannot be Didn't the aggressor. I think we have to play this like a mid-range uh, fight for the board style. Let's go with the ally here. Just because it gives me two bodies me. to take advantage of this. And then that means that next turn I can saturate with uh, double crabs to fight for these as well. But we're going to be taking a beating. Somebody who uh, has the ring and has two Mournhold traders will likely have your your life total just from this start alone. Surprise. Strong likelihood that they have something like Lightning Bolt to Surprise. deny my trade. But, I mean, they're already this day is mine. getting, uh, yeah, see, right? They've already basically halved my life total. And so the question then becomes, what do we do about it? We've got some shackle, but it means we're likely, unless I use it this turn, we're going to be unable to trade into this second trader. We're going to make this trade. Now, this is going to be a 3-1, so we, we do technically have this here, so maybe the shackle is the correct play if we're just trying to preserve our life total. I do actually think that that's what we're going to do. We could go either way. Because again, like any form of removal here means that they're pushing a lot through. Like Cliff Racer is actually pretty rough, which was my main hesitation. Because Cliff Racer is a value trade here. Yeah, this will trade into Cliff Racer, but then I still have nothing that potentially deals with this. So that was the uh, concern. We have a lot of ways to generate bodies. Just not a lot of ways to be defensive about it because we are, after all, on a Crusader and not, say, like Spell Sword or something else where we might have a fat guard. Didn't see this coming, eh? All right, so uh, there is actually a method uh, to the madness of what I am about to do here, just so we're clear. We're going to have to trade and shackle. I'm going to take one shot from this. It's a shame that we don't have a better way to keep this alive or trade into this with uh, being able to flood this board so that the guard pushed over there, but we really don't have a good way to pull that off, so... We're going to make this trade. We could use Crusader's Assault if we really wanted to draw, but I don't think that's going to end up being the play. So we are going to go ahead and take a Shackle here as well. And then make this trade. And then because we want maximum bodies over here, we'll go ahead with this. And just kind of put him on the cusp. Try to set us up for 
preserving our health total, but also giving us a good wide board to make use of this, or even better, like a halls if we top deck it. Oh, that is all of the jackals. There's a lot of dogs. Everything was taken from me. Okay. Today, okay in well, we got the uh, the old salty. Okay. We've run out of shackles. We still don't have any guards. We don't have enough reach to get there. Can only get them down to about half their health, even with the help of Divine Fervor. So, trades are on the menu. Basically, just gonna have to give them cards. There's not much I can really do about that. But I think we're gonna go ahead and do this. And then have to make a fast choice on this mud crab. Read my lips. Mouth ball. Nothing will trace back to us. Alright. We wanted to jam that body out there because uh Divine Fervor. So now we just have to hope that with seven magicka, we have not yet given them enough reach to kill us from here. They would need 10 burst for their 7. Three, six, seven, ten, twelve. 12. So we have 15 on the board. So if they do not trade and they cannot kill us, Fervor represents lethal. We hit no prophecies. I come bearing gifts. All right. Out of my sight. I think they're trying to set us up for. Our foes will have night. Lightning bolt representing lethal. Trying to get us down to uh, below four. Don't care to make a friendly wager. Oh, they can only use five, so um gonna be close. This is definitely uh you jam fervor and go. Spirit of the sky. Guide us. Duma, take you. Alright, they've hit one prophecy. Sadly, don't have a good way to, uh... Oh, they're gonna try to deny. Ah, <sighs> eight, huh? And we only have seven here, so... Hope for no prophecy again. RIP! They hit the double bolt! It's the only thing that could have really saved them. Well, I guess if they run harpies. Because we had it, even still. Well, I guess we'll show it to them. Alright, that was a good game. Sometimes you just lose games to prophecy. It happens. It happens. I think we played it nice and proper. We fought for the board until we could uh, try to set up our... Our alpha strike. But uh, two, two lightning bolts. It's just... It's going to beat us in that scenario, I think, every time, so... We will go try to give somebody else our crabs. We will give some crab love. Hopefully to... 
this opponent. And even if not, even if we do go 0 and 2, which uh, does happen from time to time, don't don't you worry. We got a whole week of Robo Crabs, and they can't all get double lightning bolt prophecies to deny me. I say that, but read my lips. Mouthpaw. Yeah, I don't think I care about giving him Winter's Grasp. Moongate, so they're a Wax Wayne Empire deck. How interesting. Did I stutter or something? This one right, will we'll go with this. Down. I will keep Sotha Sil's people alive. All right. We put it over here because we wanted to bait responses here so we can still control field lane, in case you're wondering. Because this will allow us to uh, get this damage in, which will equip the dagger. And then we can play our crabs over here. Galen is interesting with the Wax Wayne because you can get a lot of long-term value out of that. Speaking of value, this, this is going to be a big guard. It's going to be a big guard, so we'll just make our own big guard. They did not have the defensive option there. Ulfric's House Carl was going to be the play, but one strike will be all that is needed. Alright. So now we can at least draw one card with our House Carl. Or, hear me out, because we could use this to chunk through the guard next turn as well. So I actually think we're going to go with these two over the house, Carl. We basically only lose out on drawing one card because we're not breaking two runes. If we were breaking two runes, I think you go house, Carl, here all the time. But uh, Ordering matters. Training Let's pay attention here, Charmer. But I think you do something like this because they they still have to take some defensive options. If we top deck like halls here, we're in a great Let's spot. Will be all that is needed. Just kind of wanted to see what we were going to draw there. So the good news is, is unless there's a prophecy here, we should be getting two cards off of our house, Carl, which is ultimately like what we were looking for. Now they get control of the field lane here, and they have the winter's grasp, but we made them. Second guess. So uh, this game, no, no double lightning bolt prophecy slowing us down. It's the little things that count, you know. So we really just need a single creature to be able to attack. Between Crusaders, Assault, and Dawnbreaker at this point, um, we've got that covered. Or they can just concede before we have to figure it out. They must have. Not drawn into anything worth their time, and hooray, we're not 0-2. In fact, pretty close to 2-0 if it weren't for the double lightning bolt, but uh, overall, so far, crabs doing crab things, robots doing robot things, and uh, this is going to be it for this video. Uh, as I said before, deck code will be in the video description, and we're going to do a whole week of robo crabs, so uh, get used to seeing some neutral package. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Until next time, may you walk on warm sands.